Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to make a or make DNA. Um, so first go into front mode, orthographic, edit mode, hit uh, S, shift X, 0 0.2. Move it one unit along the X, so G, X, and then 1. Create a UV sphere, 8 segments and 8 rings. Move it over about uh, 2.5, so GX 2.5. And then um, take a modifier and create a mirror modifier. Also, set the shading to smooth. Now create a empty and create an array. Change this up a few. Change it from uh, the x-axis to the y-axis in the array, so about 1.5 should be pretty good. Um, select the uh, object offset, um, the object that it's dealing with, uh, select empty. Now if you uh, rotate the, the empty along the z, you'll notice we can twist our DNA. It looks pretty good. Also, oh, and um, add a subsurface modifier, and that will just make our spheres look better, as well as the rest of the DNA. So now go ahead, create a easier curve, rotate that along the Y by 90 degrees, go into side view mode, and um, scale our easier curve by 30. That's what I used in the final render. And then um, give it a curve modifier with the easier curve. And in the uh, array, change it from fixed count to fit curve, and then select the easier curve, and this will be the right length to cover the entire curve. So now if we select our, our uh, empty and the, D, the DNA, and then bring it down along the z-axis, we can make it fit pretty well. Um, we can then change the, change the curve to make this uh, DNA any shape or direction we want, really. So, that looks pretty good. Get it to how you like it. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, just as long as this all works nicely. Because then we got to figure out how to position the camera. Also, for the uh, final render, I used about 15 degrees. So that's not right. There we go. <laughs> um, now, if we put the camera about there, that should work pretty well. There we go. If we uh, go ahead and display the limit, and it looks like we're going to be aiming at this um, this DNA base right there. So drag out this distance until it's right on the surface of that ball. That looks pretty good. Um, if we render that now, it won't look so great because we haven't done any lighting or materials. Um, one more thing before we get into all that, change the world color to black. Um, it just, it looks better than the gray. Once we do all the lighting and materials, it will anyway. So bring this lamp up. Uh, 
kind of hard to figure out where everything is. Um, I'd put it about there. Set this one to being an energy of five and kind of you know, light blue, kind of like that would be fine. Uh, also set the distance to 25. Um, now bring this lamp, or duplicate that, bring it more to the front. Set this to an energy of 10 and set it to kind of a green color. The distance is fine. And then duplicate it once more and kind of create a triangle there. And that's going to be kind of an orangey color and probably set that to 15. If we render that now, it will still look kind of weird, but it's getting, I guess, a little better. <laughs> um, now we can go into materials and make it look really good. Let's call the material DNA. DNA. There we go. And uh, take the intensity and drag it down to about uh, 0.6. That should be fine. And take the specularity and drag it up to like hmm, 0.84. Change this from Cooktor to the word ISO. And that should be fine. Um, if we render that now, it will still look weird, but uh, we'll start getting these kind of glossy looking uh, reflections. Now, go ahead and uh, s turn on transparency, set it to ray trace, turn down the alpha uh, to about 0 0.01, uh, turn the Fresnel up to 0.14, change the blend to 2.55, and I think turn the specularity down all the way. Render that again. Looks pretty interesting, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, not too bad. <clears throat> turn on mirror. Um, turn the reflectivity up a little bit. Not too high, about 0.328, I guess. And uh, I think we can leave the Fresnel alone. Yep. And turn the depth up to about 4. Do that for here too, or for the transparency as well. Under that again, and it should look pretty good. As we can see, it takes a lot longer to render. And this is just in the normal Blender render, so don't have to play around with cycles at all. Yeah, one more thing you're going to want to do before we go into uh, actually the uh, compositor, because this is almost ready as is. Um, change this to receive transparent and that'll just make it so that the light will actually pass through and affect objects on the inside so like where this mm, what was a cube per a rectangle uh, goes through this sphere um, that will also get light although it looks like it's okay without it um, yeah just makes it look a little bit different Anyway, that looks pretty good, so go ahead and save that. Don't want to lose the work. Um, now into the compositor, say use nodes, and check the viewer. Also do the backdrop, there we go. Render results. Now go into filter, and select the defocus node. In cycles you don't have to do this because it'll do the uh, it'll give you your depth of field or depth of focus I don't know what 
it really stands for, but your DOF, it'll do it by itself. In the original render engine, you have to do it through the defocus node. So go ahead, connect this Z with that Z, and say UZ buffer. Um, turn this down. If I recall for mine, I did one as the final one, and set this to a slightly higher value than 16. I think I used uh, 256 for my final render. Um, maybe a little bit higher. No, shoot. There we go. That'll just decrease the kind of the speckle effect there and make it look a little bit better. And now we can do a little bit of color correction. So color, uh, color balance, pop that in there. And for mine, I kind of gave it a green yellowy tint. I mean, we could make it have a bluer tint. That looks pretty good. I mean, if you wanted, we could pop it over here. Just really make everything blue, but that's kind of weird. Actually, that's kind of cool, but yeah, it's kind of weird. The thing with these wheels is you want to take everything in moderation. So if you are going to go and change it to blue, don't go way overboard because, I mean, just this has a pretty big effect. Um, yeah, I'll go with that, with that. Actually, I may give it a slight blue. That looks pretty good. So, hmm. we might want to add a little bit of twist there because you can't really see that this is DNA with this view. So, there we go. Go back into camera view. Um, drag this up, turn it into a 3D view. That way we can see what we'll see as the camera person and uh, and be able to move around. So if I rotate that, there we go. Now if we render that, it should get the point across a little bit more. So just let that go through now and it'll take a little bit longer because it's now also calculating the, uh, the receiving the transparency. It's looking pretty good. Definitely taking its time to render though. <laughs> <clears throat> That might have been too much of an angle though, or too much rotation. Okay, I'll just stop the uh, rendering right now, just so we can see what it looks like. Um, let's go back. Ah. There we go. Um, well. 
sometimes it doesn't get the point across that it's uh, changed. So anyway, yeah, that's kind of what it'll look like. Um, when you're ready to do a final render, just turn that up to 100% and let it go to business. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Tune in next time, and uh, sorry about the delay between this video and the previous ones.